So in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about the different types of motivation. There are five different ways to be motivated. It's really important as a sales leader and a sales manager that you actually know all five. If you know all five, then you can help people get where they need to go. And let me explain what those look like. When we talk about motivation, each person is equally motivated to do something or not. So if you think of motivation as a, a full tank, it can work against you or for you. It depends on the balancing act of what's holding you back or what's moving you forward. So when you think about your employee or the uh, salesperson that you're working with, you really need to know two things. One is which, what is holding them back, and that's, I'll explain that in another video. But I want to talk to you about today the things that motivate um, individuals. So let me explain what they are. The first one is the guy that's goal motivated. Um, when you think about a goal, goal motivated people, um, they turn around and they get turned on by achieving great things. They're usually the people that will keep track of every sale that they make and sometimes will push it so hard that they'll actually step on other people's toes because they are so after the goal. They're going to see a graph. You, I mean, if you ask them where they are for totals for the year, they know. You don't even have to get them to track. They track they are goal motivated. They've set a goal to do a certain volume or achieve a certain great thing and they're going after it. That in itself is what they're after. They don't need your pats on the back. Of course, if that happens, that's wonderful. If they get the acclaim up front, that's fine. Some of them don't even want that. They won't even show up for an awards dinner or anything of that nature. But what they really want is they want to achieve it and know that they did it. It's personal and that's what's in it for them. Those individuals, all you have to do is help them get clear about their goal. How do you know when they're not really uh, moving forward um, or what's really going on if they seem to be demotivated? Well, two things can happen with a goal-motivated type of person. If they're demotivated or down, uh, one of two things takes place. It's either they're getting burdened with personal stuff on the outside of their life, uh, a business life, and it's slowing them down, so it's causing them distraction, number one. Or number two is they don't have a goal set. And it's the biggest thing that I saw in performance goal setting when I started to work with my clients. They would achieve a great goal and they would not set a new goal. They would hit the goal and immediately drop back down within about two or three months down to the previous level of performance that was not producing results for them prior to actually setting and going after a goal. So one of the first things I tell folks is this, as a sales manager, you got to know when somebody hits a great quarterly goal, that's awesome. Give them a little bit of time to celebrate it, you know, pat them on the back and then you know two or three days and then bring them back in the office and get them set for the next goal because it's critical to reset the next goal. If you don't reset the next goal, you're probably not likely to get them to produce any results. And before you know it, you know, the, you know, the person that was so on target, so self-managed and doing such a great job is no longer doing a great job. And they're going to show up on one of your reports is like way down. And you know, why is that happening? Well, that's what happened. They didn't reset their goal. So it's always good to check in with them. And that's your job. Check in with them to see what kind of goal they got. Now, the second way that people actually, uh, you know, get their uh, information or get their goals set uh, when it comes to motivation is they're learning motivated. So number two is learning. Um, learning motivated individuals don't care about goals particularly unless it's a goal to learn something. They love to learn and most of them love to share it. And uh, you know, they'll be the great teachers in your uh, midst. They'll be the person that'll uh, turn around and you know, be in the sales process and you gotta give them the whole back and all the information because they're a wealth of knowledge. And so they'll always be reading books, they'll always be doing things, and they're very good leaders because they're always learning. Um, we just want to get them to actually put it to use, which in most cases is not a problem, but it's about learning. So a great way to motivate that individual is sending them to a course if they hit a goal, um, a particular level of accomplishment, or giving them something to shoot for that gives them status in the organization where they can train others as long as their performance is doing quite well. So they understand that, that they need to use that as a mechanism to actually move forward. Um, from a motivational perspective, very unique. Does it work exceptionally well? Well, it's got triple the benefits when you think about it because if they're training other people or raising other people up in the organization that you have, you're going to find that not only are um, other people improving, but this individual who's learning motivated will also be very much engaged and producing great results. Now, what does it look like when they're not producing? It's really hard to understand that you have to be motiv that you're motivated by learning. And if you understand that, it helps. So as a sales manager, you need to understand that that individual may not be aware 
because it's not culturally normal, unless you're very academic. And then that's the goal, is you're going after certain degrees in university or your occupation, um, and then that becomes very academic. But in sales, we don't really necessarily have credentials that you know, give us status. So it's your job to make sure that you're acknowledging the work that they're doing and asking where the next focus is and making that part of their goal. It'll make them a happier person. It'll make them more productive. They'll contribute more. You're going to find that they're going to be finding themselves um, excited to come to work. It's, it's exactly what you want as a sales manager. So they're very uniquely motivated. You need to help them with that, and that's an easy job to do if you know that they're learning motivated. And how do you tell that? Well, they're the person that's always coming up and telling you about the latest book they've read. If you want to know anything, that's the person you'll go to. They know everything about everything. And even stuff that's not even relevant to the occupation. They just love to learn. They take a course all the time. I've got a good friend of mine. She is always in a course. She is a walking encyclopedia. Um, or if you will, she's almost, you know, just knows everything. It's, it's really amazing. So it's wonderful uh, to talk with that individual because she's always got great insights and great things to bring to the table. She's learning motivated. And so can your people in your, uh, your, your office be motivated as well. And your salespeople can help them get really clear about that so they can and move forward. Now, the third one that we're going to talk about is what we call people motivated. People motivated lovers, <laughs> or lovers, or lovers of people, are awesome uh, to work with because they just love the relationship part of it. They love to sell because they get to talk to people, help people achieve great things, or you know, make an impact in people's lives. They are focused in on relationship. So let them have that. And you need to spend time with them to develop the relationship. A great way to motivate that person when they're people motivated is to give them your time when they achieve goals. So you take them out for lunch, right? Um, when they hit their uh, goal, or you put that on top, or you you know take a you know uh, go to a course with them, or you do something where you're spending a little bit more face time with them based on how they're doing. The danger here that you can run into when they're demotivated is when they're starting to you know not produce is that you'll give them what they want time. Time will give them that connection that they're looking for, but it's a negative motivator. It actually um, is the opposite of what you want to do. So you may be causing yourself this problem where you are turning around and having to dedicate time, watch this individual, spending time talking with them because they're not producing, and it's exactly what there is motivating them. So it's motivating them not to do anything because every time they don't do something, you're giving them time. So you got to turn around and actually really be aware of that uh, for that individual so you can spin it around and actually work it the other way and just say, great, when you get that, you know, those calls done, or when you contact you know, that account, uh, we'll spend a few minutes together. So at least it's moving them forward, but you don't create the problem. And unfortunately, these types of people, most sales managers don't pick this up, and that's exactly what they'll do. They'll start dedicating time, helping this person get going, and this person becomes what I call enabled to be ineffective. Um, and it's strictly because they're getting what they need in a negative format by being dysfunctionally uh, inept in what they're doing. So, you know, that's just not going to work if you're trying to produce great results. So be aware of that. It's a little bit sneaky um, that it creeps up on you and it's not being aware. But you need to know that for every person that you're working with. Now, what's number four? Number four is what we call intrinsic. Intrinsically motivated individuals are people that are motivated internally by things inside of them. It's, it's like a, a spiritual thing that I have to do. And it has nothing to do with you or someone else. So if you've got a salesperson that is motivated at that level, what you want to do is you want to just ask them what it means to them to achieve. You want to be aware of it. And they'll have some goal of something that they're becoming, someone that they want to accomplish. And they'll say things like, I want to be a master salesperson. I want to be the best that I can be. I want to hit this level um, of, of accomplishment. It doesn't necessarily have, you know, specifically, it may have a goal uh, number on it, but it's probably more about exactly how that number relates to their internal feeling. And you'll know because they'll say, yeah, I want to hit uh, X number of dollars in sales. And that's one way they'll say it. Um, and that's a goal-oriented person that will say it with that kind of tonality. And then the uh, intrinsic person is going to go, yeah, I want to hit that level. And then you, you know, it's got a different tone to it when they're talking about it because it means something very big on the inside. It's not rah, rah, rah. It means that they're becoming someone. 
um, and it could be a stepping stone to the next position for them. It could be a number of different things, but it's more about internal satisfaction, and that's what you need to understand to help them work. Excuse me. The fifth way that people are motivated is really quite different. It's all about thrill and excitement. People that are motivated by thrill and excitement love to have something that gets their blood going. So that's the opportunity to do things that they wouldn't normally do. So a thrill seeker, you know, hits a goal, they may want to jump out of a plane, they may want to turn around and do a high five and do a little bit of a scream dance or something like that, but they want to have some kind of thrill that's going to get them going. Then the bigger the goal is, the more likely they're going to pull it off. With a thrill seeker, um, if they're not having a large motivation, it's usually because there's nothing at stake, there's no risk. There's nothing that's going to you know, get their blood pumping. It's not even a big enough goal to get them going. So they're actually uh, finding themselves just a 10% increase is not doing it. They want to accomplish something that everybody will notice and that everybody will do the high five and it's going to push them way out of their comfort zone. Thrill seekers are those individuals that will turn around and get things going in a way that uh, you can really appreciate um, because they're going to create an energy. They're going to create a momentum. They're going to create all kinds of things that are going to take place that are going to add into the environment at your office, they're going to probably bring some people in and people are going to start to get motivated as well. Um, they're going to turn around and make it so that it's a big, ostacious, uh, big audacious goal. Go after it and really uh, dig into it. If you've got a thrill seeker in your midst, you'll know because they're very outgoing um, and they're very gregarious. If they're not feeling gregarious, that means they're demotivated because the goal is not big enough. I've done seminars where I've talked to individuals that are uh, thrill seekers and uh, I'll ask them what their goal is and they'll go, yeah, that's my goal for the year. And I'll look at them and I go, you're not even motivated to do that goal. So the likelihood of you doing it is pretty slim, right? And they go, well, you know, whatever. And I go, you could probably do that in your sleep, right? It's like 10% increase over last year. Yeah, no big deal. Well, it doesn't take your breath away, so it doesn't really, you know, you, you can't even remember what the goal is, do you? And then they start to laugh. They say, well, probably not. And so what would be the big scary goal that would actually get you motivated to do something that's unbelievably exciting, you know, and what would that look like for you? That's when their ears will, you know, perk up, their eyes will get wide open. Now they're engaged because now it's worth chasing after. So those individuals, um, you know, have a certain type of personality, a little hard to understand, but I got to tell you, they can produce phenomenal results in a short order when you need the miracles to happen. They can pull bunnies out of the hat. They're wonderful for that. You want to make sure that they're on your team. So I've given you five different ways to be motivated. It's really important as a sales leader and a sales manager that you actually know all five. If you know all five, then you can help people get where they need to go. It's really important that you don't treat people the same way, uh, one to the next, to the next, to the next, because we're all motivated differently. What you do for one person to motivate them, uh, doing the same thing to that next individual will, might demotivate them. And so that's just important for you to know because you need to fine tune your skills for each person that's available. So you're giving them what they need one on one for those few moments a day that you can talk to them and get them focused in a way that's going to get the results that you're looking for as, you know, as a team and uh, making sure that they get what they need so that they can produce results. Think about it from this perspective. If you had a fleet of trucks and some were gas and some were diesel, you would not put diesel in, the, in the, all of them because that would kill the motors on some of them. And so, you know, we take care to make sure the good input is coming out, uh, going into the unit uh, that we're working with. The same thing applies in sales management. You have to make sure that you're giving good input to those individuals so they can use that input as motivation. And yes, they do want to produce great results for you. Please take this information, put it to use. My name is Rich Groff. If you've got other questions like this on motivation, check out some of my other videos on motivation because we're going to get into it in great detail uh, uh, for sales managers and, and leaders. And, and if you've got other questions that pertain, please put them down in the bottom comments and I'll definitely get a video going for you. Again, Rich Groff, RG Performance Sales Coaching. It's been my pleasure.